Okay, welcome to the video. Sig Guy here, and I am super excited about this video today. This is going to be an unboxing slash review type video of a new pistol that I got inside this box. Uh, I did let the cat out of the bag this weekend, though, as I was pretty excited, and I really couldn't wait, so I wanted to get out and shoot it and completely disassemble it and change some stuff on it. Um, so I repackaged it all back up, put it back in the box, and like on Christmas when we already know what's in that package that we got, um, we'll try our best act surprise when we see it for the first time. So with that, let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the box really quick. It's for this guy from this guy. And this is what's inside the box. We got a Sig Sauer P226X5 Supermatch, the Armory Craft Edition. This is right from the Master Shop in Germany. Um, nine millimeters, single action only, with an adjustable trigger. Comes with a spare magazine, and that's our serial number as well. So it's pretty cool that the Master Shop put this kind of information on the label for Armory Craft. Uh, there's some other stuff that they did on this pistol, so we'll get into that in just a second. Okay, so let's take a look at what's inside the box. Right away, you can see we got a certificate here from the Master Shop. Um, this is another thing that they included for the special edition X5 Supermatch for Armory Craft. Your normal X5s did not come with a certificate like this. So, uh, Sig Sauer Master Shop Armory Craft Edition with the serial number all handwritten there. It says, Your handgun has been custom built by Sig Sauer's most elaborate gunsmiths. It represents our common passion for special and unique firearms. Thank you for your appreciation of this fine piece of art. Sig Sauer, and then it's got the signature from the head of sales. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, adds to the collectability of this edition uh, X5 Supermatch. Okay, as you can see, it comes in the traditional plastic case that all SIGs come in pretty much. Um, I forgot to act surprised when we opened it up. but uh, So we have our pistol. We have a magazine already installed. We have a spare magazine here. Um, this is, comes in a plastic bag, and it's got the tag on it. But like I said, I've already shot this. I've already completely disassembled it, got all the lube out of there, the assembly lube, and lubed it up properly, and I've actually already shot it. Um, but this does say 17 rounds on it. It does hold 19. Um, this is for different model SIGs as well. That's why the 17 is on there. Um, we have a tool kit here. comes with all the tools to make all the adjustments for the trigger. It has a, those are Allen wrench. It's got a Torx bit one in here. That will remove our trigger shoe if you want to switch it out. And actually our grip panels are Torx as well, so that'll take care of that. And then we have a tool here with three different flats. Um, that's used for adjust, adjusting our rear sight. So that was nice that SIG included all those tools. Uh, look at that. We got some high definition gun grease. So all those naysayers that say you shouldn't use grease on your gun. Well, I'm pretty sure if a $5,000 pistol comes with grease, it's probably safe to use on most everybody else's uh, pistols that they have. I've been using grease for years. I'm a big believer in it. It stays put, and it actually reduces a lot of the wear um, on my pistols. So I'm glad to see that in there. Up in the top here, we have our manuals. Same manual, just a gazillion different languages. We have English here uh, in the middle of this one. You can see the illustrations are very nice. Everything we need to know about our new pistol. It's got all our specifications, weights, and all that stuff. Um, it's also got an exploded diagram here, right there, with the parts list right there. No part numbers, though. So um, good luck trying to order any of this stuff. I'm not even sure where you'd get it from. So if anybody knows where you can order this stuff in the comments below, if you could post, that'd be great. Uh, we also have a test target here. Um, and this is another thing that was a stipulation for Armory Craft that they asked the Master Shop for these 10 pistols. Our good friend Alex test fired all of these. And this is actually a photocopy of the original target. I had the original target sent overseas. I'm having something special done to it. So um, I just made a photocopy of this before I sent that out. So we got our 226. We got our serial number here 25 meters, five shots by her. Um, she's worked for the Master Shop for a long time, and she's done a huge amount for the Sig Sauer community, so we really appreciate everything that she's done. It's a shame that they had to close the doors over there. So I see a lot of targets online, and a lot of times I see her stamp on there. So check yours out. Chances are she might have shot yours as well. 
Um, what I heard was she's shot over a million rounds for six hours, so um, pretty awesome. So that adds to the collectability of this special edition uh, X5 Super Match as well. Before we start waving this thing around, we're going to make sure we're working on a safe firearm, so we're going to remove our magazine. And as a rule of thumb, I never have any magazines on my benches or ammo, but based on this video here, we're going to make an exception. Uh, we're going to lock our slide to the rear. We're going to physically and visually check to make sure there's no round in the chamber, which there's not. No magazine. Check our breech face. We're going to look away, do the same thing again. Chamber, magazine, breech face. We are working on a safe firearm. The X5 Supermatch line has been around since about 2014, and a little um, history on the Master Shop itself. They announced in the summer of 2020 that they'd be closing the doors, so Armory Craft put together a deal with them to have them make a limited special edition run of the X5 Supermatch, which they did. Um, these got finished in December 2020, uh, and then basically uh, just before Christmas in December 2020, they sadly closed their doors. So. Uh, as we talked about already, the label on the outside of the box referencing Armory Craft was one of the requirements. A certificate included with it was also another one. Uh, Armory Craft being on the certificate was another requirement. Alex test firing all 10 of them, um, which she did. And then we have some engravings on the slide here. We have the Master Shop logo itself, which typically they don't even put these on their own guns. And then we have the Armory Craft logo below it. So, um... Like I said, they made 10 of them. Uh, Armory Craft got them. They did not put them on Gun Broker or for sale on the website. Basically sold them to friends, family, co-workers, um, people they hold near and dear to their heart. So as one of those 10 people, I feel, I feel very honored to own one of these pistols. Uh, Milos over there, Armory Craft has done a ton of stuff for me throughout the years, and I do really appreciate everything that he's done for me and the SIG community as well because um, nobody offers more aftermarket SIG parts than Armory Craft um, that I know of. So... With that, let's get started about the specifics of the X5 Supermatch. So the very first day that I got this pistol and I opened up the box, immediately I was wowed by how sexy this thing looks. This is a very good looking pistol. Um, but that's not the thing I remember the most. The thing I remember the most is how heavy this thing is. This thing is like ridiculous heavy. Okay, And to me, personally, for a fun gun, a range gun, competition gun, home defense gun, the heavier the better because the more weight you have there, the less recoil because it's going to help mitigate and absorb some of that recoil. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit of an experiment or just a show and tell basically because a lot of people are familiar with the P320 X5 Legion which has the TXG grip module, the tungsten infused X grip module. Basically tungsten powder put into the polymer when it's a liquid injected into the mold makes a super heavy uh, frame for this pistol. I also have the Springer Precision tungsten guide rod in here. We have the Armory Craft Steel magwell not the aluminum one and then we have a brass uh, grip module weight as well and this one's safe obviously as well so i remember when i first got this i actually took a 228 i believe and a 226 um, and put them on the scale together unloaded and then i put this on the scale um, loaded and basically this weighed more than those other two metal guns combined so we're gonna do a little weigh-in today just so you can get an idea of how much that x5 super match uh, weighs so we'll put this on the scale and we come in at two pounds 8.9 ounces and then put our x5 super match on there we come in at two pounds 9.9 ounces so you can see it's even heavier than the x5 uh, legion all right so getting into pistol specifics okay um kind of start at the front here and kind of work our way around the first thing you'll notice is it's got a dawson precision green fiber optic front sight that did not come on the pistol uh, the one that came on the pistol was a solid black one uh, no night sight no fiber optic it was just solid black just like our rear sight here and the problem I was having a couple problems is after about 100 125 rounds things started getting blurry um, and it was really wasn't working for me and then the targets that I shoot at it's basically got 48 three quarter inch circles on that and I basically one shot per circle, try to see how many circles I can hit. And that front sight that was original on here was pretty wide. It was covering up most of that circle. So I couldn't be as accurate as I normally am with a fiber optic. And I know this pistol is a heck of a lot more accurate than um, all my other pistols. So uh, I did put that on there today. So we're going to have to go back to the range probably tomorrow and re-zero our rear sight. So we have the front sight there. 
stainless steel guns, steel slide, steel frame. Uh, it's not PVD, which I thought it was originally. It is all basically just raw stainless steel. So I'm told that if you ever wanted to restore one of these, basically media blast the whole thing and it'll look like brand new, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have the X5 engraved on the side here. Again, it's because it's got the five inch barrel. If it was an X6 with a six inch barrel, it would say X6 there. Uh, we have our rear adjustable sight, which we just kind of talked about. We have our elevation adjustment. We have our windage adjustment over here, left and right. So it's super easy. I am a big fan of the rear adjustable sights, just like on the X5 Legion. You can do it right at the range. Even if you're shooting a little bit wonky that day or whatever, and all of them are right or all of them are left, up and down, whatever, you can kind of make the adjustment and compensate for whatever you got going on there. So I do love the rear adjustable sight. We have our serrations on the slide here, front and rear, both sides obviously, very grippy. We have our skeletonized hammer. We have our very thick takedown lever. And the reason why that's like that is it gives you a place to put your thumb, okay, to put some downward pressure on it, and that helps mitigate some of that recoil, okay? So it's no secret, I'm a huge fan of Armory Craft products. And the reason being is because not only does the stuff look badass, but it actually serves a purpose, it has a function. Um, that's what I like about them. So what I'm talking about is um, our skeletonized hammer. If you like the super match look, you can basically get a super match or skeletonized hammer. I got all this stuff right on my website too, um, to replicate that look. Okay. Uh, we have our super match style takedown lever. Same as the one here, similar anyway. Gives you a place to put your thumb. So this is basically the inspiration as, as well as a lot of other high-end pistols where it's inspired Armory Craft to make those products so that they're available for you on your pistol. So we have our extended mag release, which a lot of people are like, wow, that sticks out pretty far. Well, guess what? German's been doing it for quite a while. And contrary to popular belief, when you're holding this and you're shooting it, you're not even touching that mag release. There's like a void here in your palm if you're shooting properly. Um, so there's no really risk of dumping a mag um, as you're competing or whatnot. So extended mag releases are becoming pretty popular. All right, so moving right along, we have the ambidextrous safety. This is the SAO model, so it's got the manual safety on there. It's very audible, very tactile. Um, I really like that. No decocker, obviously, because it's the SAO model. Uh, we have our extended mag release, which we already talked about. And then we have our trigger here. So this trigger is pretty awesome. I don't know why they have not incorporated this style into more SIGs um, because trigger pull weight is one of the hot topics all the time where people want to customize the trigger pull weight. Um, with a turn of a screw, I can decrease it or increase it in this pistol. So the specifications in the manual aren't actually what I found in this pistol. And there's always that question of are people measuring the pull weight correctly what i mean by that is a lot of people put the trigger pull gauge on there and they kind of snap it um that's going to make a super low reading if you put it on there and you pull like as insanely as slow as possible to the point where it's going to surprise you when it actually the trigger breaks then you get your reading and that's the way that trigger pull weights um, need to be taken on these so i did it with the screw all the way backed out and i did it with the screw all the way um threaded in so the manual is like 2 to 16 newtons, which is uh, 2 pounds, 9 ounces to 3 pounds, 5 ounces. Mine, um, where I have it set right now, is right around 2 pounds. It is a super light, crisp, awesome trigger. So, um, so you have your adjustment right there. You can do it right at the range. We have another hole here in the back, which actually goes to the screw that's behind our trigger shoe. And that's going to increase or decrease our over-travel. And then if we remove our slide, I'm going to show you this on camera. There's an Allen screw right in here. Okay, and that's for our pre-travel. Screw it in, run it out to increase and decrease our pre-travel. Uh, while I have the slide off real quick, we'll talk about our guide rod. It's a pretty cool design. 
kind of like a capture design type deal where we have our mainspring here. We have this rod that slides over this inner rod. And then we have a spring here in the back. And this thing kind of works like captured guide rods and stuff um, where it's kind of a staged design basically to soften the amount of recoil. Once this thing coils all the way up, then this one here starts acting um, and it kind of makes it a lot more enjoyable to shoot. So that's our four different adjustments on our trigger. Next we'll talk about our grips here. We got Hogue G10 grips. Um, this is like that chain link texture on the Hogues. Very, very grippy. Um, pretty awesome. Pretty comfortable too, surprisingly, as grippy as it feels. Um, once you get over 100 into 200, if you're sweating and stuff, it might start getting a little bit of discomfort on your hand or whatnot. But um, the most important thing is in grip, obviously, with stippling and anything else on a pistol, whether your hands are wet or bloody or whatever, um, you need that grip. So these Hogue G10s um, fulfill that need. We got the X in the side of them there. And if you look straight down, you see you got a nice palm swell here, and then it kind of tapers in up here at the top. So basically, I expected a bigger grip feeling grip anyway on such a big heavy pistol surprisingly this is feels thinner than the x5 pleasantly surprised with that it's got some indentations here for your thumb and for your finger over here it's got the super high undercut here high beaver tail in the back um, so the grip on this thing is pretty awesome it's very enjoyable to shoot okay we have our stainless steel torques for our grips they provided the tool to remove those as well. And then we have what the Germans are calling a jet funnel, our magwell here. Okay, It's held down by one screw in the back. That basically goes into the bottom of your mainspring seat. If you don't want to have that on there, basically remove that screw and slide this off. And then you still have a magwell or a funnel on your frame. Kind of beveled edges there if we were to remove this. And then Posted pictures the other day on Facebook about Armory Crafts mark on there. And that is awesome right there. You, It's out of the way. You can't see it. You put a magazine in it. You don't even know it's there. You have some of these other import companies that basically, in my opinion, they ruin the pistol by putting their long name all along the frame here on the outside. Um, I don't appreciate that. I wouldn't buy the pistol just because of that. So if you can put these anywhere on the pistol that you want, why wouldn't you put it somewhere like that? where it doesn't deface it, in my opinion. So to finish up, just talking about the gun, we have some nice serrations and stuff here on the front strap and the front of the trigger guard. Very grippy. Um, just adds to the grip that you can put on this thing. And then we have our 1913 Picatinny rail. Pretty standard on guns nowadays. It's got this circle here in the middle, which for a while I could not figure out why that was there. Okay. So basically, super match style gun, competition shooting, everything. They have the bridge mounts, those mounts that slide over the whole thing here. They're kind of angled back, and then you put your red dot or whatever you're running for a RDS on there. Um, kind of mounts on that bridge mount. So when you put that mount on here, basically, when you run the screw in, it's like a big Allen wrench, I think. Um, this piece goes into this little circle, and it's kind of beveled on the edges. It acts like a wedge. So when you tighten this thing in there, it kind of presses in on the sides of the circle rather than in the center of the circle right on the frame where you're going to put a mark on your frame. Um, so that's a pretty cool idea. And then they have a weight that actually goes on the bottom here um, that attaches the same way. So that's what that's all about. So to kind of wrap this up, we'll just demo the trigger really quick. Um, when I went out shooting the other day, the problem I was having is I was having double taps. I had the trigger adjusted basically with almost no pre-travel, no over-travel, and as light as it would go. So we're still safe, obviously. Physically and visually check the chamber. No magazine. Reach face. Good to go. Just going to be pulling the trigger here. So I would basically shoot the pistol. My slide would cycle. And then because the way I shoot is basically I'm not letting go of the trigger all the way like that. I'm basically just letting out as much as possible for it to reset then I'm right back on the wall and I can you know shoot my second shot so 
what was happening is the pistol was still moving after my first shot when it got to the wall. So rather than me being able to sit on the wall because it was moving, basically the momentum made my finger make the trigger um, depress, causing it to go off. So basically I need to remove some of the over travel, maybe tighten up or make the trigger pull a little heavier, um, and then I'll reduce those double taps. So, uh, so I did that. I put the front sight on there and I made some adjustments. I'm all ready to go to the range tomorrow to zero the sights again and see how it shoots. So I did add quite a bit of pre-travel there. And then right around the wall right there. Basically no creep at all. And then it goes off, slide cycles. I added some over travel, so we're going to see it go forward a little bit. very crisp trigger so you can basically adjust that to where you put your finger on it and there's like no movement there at all you just squeeze a little bit and it goes off and then you reset as soon as you bring this thing out it resets and then you're ready to go again it was basically too sensitive for me so um there you have it that's the x5 super mash the armory craft edition i am super pleased with this pistol the only problem now is a lot of my other pistols um not too thrilled about anymore because this one here is so awesome uh, it's a good problem to have i guess anyway i hope you enjoyed this video as always i hope you found it useful if you're on the fence about buying anything like this uh, you might want to hurry up because supplies are going to dry up and they're already getting to be uh, ridiculous prices uh, i know armory craft has a bunch of stuff on their website still so maybe you want to check that out anyway uh thank you for watching and if you're not a subscriber or following my youtube channel there should be a link right down here if you could smash that i would really appreciate it uh for a lot of these upgrades the hammer the super match style takedown lever adjustable triggers our extended mag release i got mag wells this is the armory craft magazine base pad inspired by this one that came with my x5 super match um, so if you want that cool looking feature on your regular uh, classic P-Series, I got all kinds of magwells and stuff on sigguy.com as well. So thank you very much and have a good day.